Looking to stretch that dollar, to feed a bunch and you don't know what to do and you need some help? Well folks, I'm just telling you, this little guy here, Hamburger Helper, he might show up, but I'm gonna help you create an old classic with a good hamburger and some creamy, creamy, cheesy goodness. Ooh, you're gonna love this one and it will feed the crew, it will. So come on, I'll get the Hamburger Helper to go in. Hey, thank y'all for stopping by the backyard on a beautiful day the Lord has made. It is a good one, it is. And if you're a new viewer and this is the first time that you're tuning in, help us spread the word of good news, good food, and relaxation. That's what it's all about here at the Red River Ranch, courtesy of the Beagle. Here he is right here, folks, live and in color. He is doing his job. And what are we talking about today? Hamburger Helper. Woo-wee. Got a box of it right here. Y'all remember this little guy? Maybe Andy flash a big old picture up or got that white glove holding that spoon, always ready to help. Well, let's talk about it just for a minute because I'm pretty interested in the history of Hamburger Helper. I didn't know there was a history on it. <laughs> oh, this got people through a lot of hard times right here. December, 1970. It's sort of like now. Things was looking a little bleak. The economy was down, beef prices was high. So General Mills and that famous cook, Betty Crocker, got together, they did, and they said, Let's put this out there so we can stretch folks dollar. How can we take a pound of meat, add some stuff to it, and let it feed six or seven people? Well, folks, my mother did it for many years, and this is a great product. But folks, we're going to cowboy it up a little, change some things around, and get some really, really good cheesy, creamy goodness because we adding some smoked cheese. No, not that kind you buy. We'll have a little video right up there where you can watch it when we smoke that cheese because it's going to bring so much more flavor to this dish. And we're going to add some what? Green chili. So it's going to be good. So let's get started on this deal before something happens. Starting out with about two pounds of certified Angus beef, 80-20. Got that skillet hot over here this field on that hasty bake. So let's get to browning it up. Uh-oh. Uh -oh. We had a jumper, big. And I need to be telling you, start with some really good ground beef. It's just gonna make this deal even better when you get finished. But hey, my mother used to use whatever we could drag up across there. Sometimes it'd be half beef, half sausage. So whatever we can do to stretch that dollar to make y'all make it a happy meal every day is what we're trying to get to you. Well, it is browned up there. Nearly all the pink is gone off that. And if there is some grease, folks, all I want you to do is just rake this over here to one side, let that grease drain to the bottom and spoon it out or get it out any way you can. Don't drip it in the floor, you'll get in trouble. Guess what? You'd be telling yourself a while ago, he never seasoned that meat. Well folks, if you had to drain some of that grease, we might be losing some of that seasoning. So what are we going with? Red River Ranch Original. Where you get it, www.kentrollins.com, BR3549, as Junior Sample once said. And let's season. Then next, we got one large, I mean honking large white onion, because I do love me some onion and they got a lot of good properties to it that you need for your immune system. So we're gonna chunk them in there. Give it a little stir, just to make sure. And folks, I'm gonna tell you right now, this boat might be overloaded time it is done. And we got four big honking garlic cloves. That's why I like it is. Like a technical measurement. Honking, yeah, it means all that you can fit in the little gun here. But remember, I told you we was gonna cowboy it up just a little. Look here, hatch green chili. Now, if it's just me eating, it'd probably be like 12 jalapenos, but we're gonna consider Shan and the Beagle today and keep it user-friendly. Go ahead and put that in. And everything you'll be needing to know about this recipe will down, be down there in a the little link below. Shan and Andy always got you fixed up. Now, we're gonna use about two cups of this, I hope. And this is dry macaroni. This ain't that stuff you had to boil. I don't know if people can hear it, but there's a lot of cows going. Uh-huh. The, the cows are probably in protest today as we are cooking beef. Hey, y'all heard the burglar alarm? That is the beagler alarm. He says somebody smells food. Some beef broth. Now, I'm just going to add about two cups of this. There is three there. But, folks, this is what you call cooking in one pot. So we're going to stir that up a little. Let it come to a simmer, and I can tell you right now, mm, that is already gonna be some fine dining, it is. And a lot of you all the time ask, 
I don't have no lid for my skillet. You know, my skillet didn't come with a lid. You got a Dutch oven, you got another skillet that you can turn on top, anything. We need to cover that and let it simmer right there. We do till it gets that macaroni tender. Then we're going to go back and add a little more goodness to it. Well, on the fire, 15 minutes exactly it was. And as you can see, most of the liquid has evaporated. The little macaronis is just right. What's this? Crema cheese. But not only do we have some cream cheese, we're going to use a half a cup of sour cream as well. And we're going to guesstimate on this and try to match it that dollop right there exactly. So I think that is it on the money it is. As we move that from the heat, we just want to stir them two in. Just let them incorporate well up in there. And then we'll add some more goodness to it. Well, when you get it to that point, folks, and depending on exactly how many noodles you use, how much ground beef did you weigh out, and you take the scientific measuring pi R square and divide that by 3.69 millimeters, you may have to add a little more sour cream or cream cheese is what I'm telling you. To get it to the consistency, you like it. And that little guy on the box that's got the white glove up here, He'd be proud of us right now because we're doing a good job. Now, folks, it don't take long on this point. I don't let the hasty bake down. If you're doing this in the oven, in the oven, on the stovetop in the house, turn it to very low or just slide it off the heat till you get all that in there and then bring it back over. And on low heat, you just want to let that sour cream blend and that cream cheese get all melted throughout. One thing I'm going to tell you, folks, this little guy in the box over here, he didn't be having no smoked cheese. You can do it on any grill. We showed you how it is so easy and we used a lot of different kinds of cheese. Today I'm using some cheddar and some Monterey Jack, but you can smoke any cheese. Now mozzarella, hey, you gotta be careful cause it's sort of soft and stuff like that, but mm, don't take long, about two and a half to three hours with just a little bit of heat and just some smoke flavors. And I blended some peach and some apple through here. Can I tell you a precise measurement of how much I'm gonna put in there? Have y'all watched my cheese making videos? We use a lot of cheese, so I'm gonna use a bunch. Not a whole block, but we're gonna use a bunch. And the smoked cheese is gonna bring out so much flavor in this. So let me get to shredding. Or is it called grating, Shannon? That's a, uh, that's shredded. Okay, but how did we get it shredded? On the cheese Grater. <laughs> yeah, uh -huh. yep, what I thought. Watch this little trick here. Half full. Ooh. Whoa. That that is that's, enough cheese. That's a lot of cheese. Oh, you can't have too much cheese. And I've had some really good help out here today, and they've been waiting patiently. So let's get the smoked cheese inspectors over here. Here you go, Duker. You have yours. Now, folks know you got manners, and you mine well. And this is going on about 10 years that you've been helping me with this. And oh, how me and Mommy love you. You got a lot of fans out there, and I want you to wait and not take it. Duke wants some. Hang on. Good job, Bubby. Mountains of cheese. You got to have it. The folks in Wisconsin are saying, praise Jesus, and we thank you, Cowboy <laughs> Kent, for throwing the cheese in there. We do. How much is it? I'd say probably close to a little over a cup of each one. Now, you can use whatever kind of cheese you want, and as much as you want, or as little as you want. Let me uh, see how fast I can take this off without burning my fingers. And as my good friend Marilyn Sestatia says up there in La Mole, Nevada, when you're cooking. When things go bad, I cover up with cheese. <laughs> so let's get the lid off this. It's just got a little simmer to it. And let's go to putting that cheese in there. That's sort of hot it was. So like I say, folks, you, you cheese accordingly to how you like it. You cannot have too much cheese. Ask the big. Ask the folks in Wisconsin. Ask anybody. They will tell you, you got to have some cheese. If the little man on the box, this guy here, see, if he was to put a title on this, he would say, Cowboy Kent, cheeseburger, green chili, smoked macaroni and beef. Cheesy goodness. Uh-huh. And I want you just to give that a stir till we can get that cheese all incorporated in there and melted. But this here, it don't get no better than this. It's what I call good. And so many times on ranches when I'd be out there and I'd need sort of a quick throw together meal that'd feed a lot because maybe somebody was coming in for lunch or supper that I didn't know about, I could make hamburger helper like this and feed a lot of people with four pounds of meat. So it is something that'll stick to your ribs. We've showed you how to stretch that dollar. I'm finna show you how to eat it.
Well, it is a done deal. That dog will hunt, stick a fork in it. It's over, folks, and I am fitting to stick a fork in it. And this is going to bring back a lot of memories for me because you could get this with one of them good old homemade biscuits out of that video we did and patch up with this and you'd have a full meal deal and a happy dance every day. Mm. I'm excited about this one. Mm. Take me back to the 70s. Do some disco dancing. Mm -hmm. I, I think I seen, uh, this is, uh-huh. And then you throw in a little cowboy move right there at the end, uh-huh. Yes. That stuff is so good. That smoky cheese adds so much to it, but it is so good, so easy to make, and it'll stretch that dollar for you. You can gather that family up around the house there, and you can eat or make it and take it to your neighbor. Show how goodness there is in the world, because it is a bunch. As always, I'd like to tip my hat to all our service men and women and all the veterans who have kept that old flag of flying, and we just thank you so much. All the first responders and everybody tending us to this out here in this crazy world we live in today. But folks, remember, this is a place where you can come, whether you be watching it on the TV, your phone, or your computer, driving down the road in a truck, pull over first, I don't want you to have a wreck, and then you can watch it. We want you to feel comfortable. Me and Shan want you to know that y'all are our family and we appreciate that so much that you do it. Everything that we used will be down there in the little link below. Andy, thank you. Beagle Duke, we appreciate it. Shan, I love you very much. Thank you. And God bless you each and every one. And I'll see you down the hamburger helper, smoky cheese, green chili, cheesy, cheesy goodness. Trail. Yeah. You ready? You ready? Okay. Hear that clanging? Hey, Big, what you got going on there, culinary? He is doing good. Word a little man in the box. <laughs>